Hello, Jerry Stewart here. You know the amazing thing about these uh, podcasts is that we're not in Hollywood. <laughs> we don't have makeup artists. And we speak whenever we feel the driving word in our head and in our heart to speak at that moment. So um, you can see I got a little bit of a sore here, and it's because Kelly and I were on a cruise about two weeks ago, and I laid out in the sun until I got baked like an old crawdad. And uh, this made a little sore right here that's trying to cover up our heel up. And uh, <laughs> I keep feeling really, uh, you, know, you know, you don't like anything that's there that people look at and go, wow, I wonder what's wrong with that guy. Anyway, so uh, there's no makeup. Um, if you could see my whole body, you would see that I'm actually still in my robe. It's Saturday morning, and Kelly and I were sitting here talking and praying. And of course, one of the big deals right now is what's gonna happen with this mandate that our government is wanting to put through and trying to put through and sort of, they are putting it through that if you don't get the shots, you lose your job, period. You think about that for a minute. This country is we the people. And although our legislators try to put themselves up on a higher step, oh, we're your leaders, Ju, 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 ju. The truth is, our leaders are also we the people. We're all we the people. We've elected these we the peoples to lead us, but not to dictate to us what we have to do. It's the truth. It's the way our founding fathers designed it. And when we get off the track and make it like, this is what you're going to do because I'm up here and you're down here. It's never going to work. Now, does that mean I don't believe there should be rules and laws? Of course there should be. But to tell people that if you don't take the shot, you lose your job. If if the shot really worked, if it really, really worked, and once you got the shot, boom, you would not get the sickness. If it worked, then we could all say, wow, that's a good idea. Let's all get it. You know, when I was a young boy, five years old, my older brother and I both got polio. That was about 1953, and that was back when everybody was terrified of polio. There was no shot. There was no uh, process that you could follow to keep you from getting polio. And to this day, nobody knows how we got polio. We didn't get around any people who had polio. They don't even know how it's transmitted, but we got it. And we went through a long process, a lot of hard work by the hospital, by the doctors, by the nurses, and we completely recovered. But there were some who never recovered. There were some who died, some who ended up in iron lungs, some that ended up in wheelchairs and in disabled in so many different ways. And then not long after that, uh, Jonah Salk, I want to say, Salk came up with the remedy by being able to give us the antidote to save us from getting polio. Now, it made perfect sense. Kids, adults, everyone would get the polio antidote so that you wouldn't get polio. But even in a way then, it was different because it really wasn't contagious. We didn't know how. Now, let's come back forward. If we knew for sure 
that this antidote, this shot, was absolutely, absolutely the remedy, then I think people could push pretty hard. I would say our leaders could push pretty hard and say, you know what, if you're not going to get in the group, then maybe you need to stand over here and not be too close to the group because we don't want you uh, to pass it on. But they're not. They're in a different position. The different position is that there are people who have gotten shot one, shot two, and then the third, and they still get it. They still get it. The truth is, Nobody knows for sure how some get it and some don't. Now, for Kelly and I, we've gotten all three. We got the most recent one because we could not go on our cruise if we did not have the booster and the two first shots. So we, we, we followed. Plus, uh, as many of you know, I'm still fighting a battle with cancer, and I'd prefer uh, not to have anything I don't have to have. So we really had no powerful reason why we shouldn't take the shot. So we did. But there are some people, for various reasons, that they don't want to take the shot. Number one, they don't trust the government. They don't trust what the government might be putting in them. They don't trust. And, you know, these days, I have to say, that's not a totally wacky idea. And there's a lot of things that are going on that we don't know about. A lot of things that are being cooked up that we don't know about. But think about it. Some of the states decided to sue our government. To sue our government to... So, to uh, to sue our present administration and to say, you do not have the right to make me lose my job because I haven't taken the shot. Why is it not fair? Because you can't tell me that the shot really works. They used to think that it for sure would, but now they're finding there are people, I'll say it again, who have had both shots and the follow-up and they still got it, okay? Now, think about this. Uh, Kelly and I, when we're not doing radio and, and speaking and podcasts and such, we are tax accountants. So we're talking with hundreds and hundreds of people every uh, year. We're very, very blessed that we have a work that we can help others to uh, stay on the straight and narrow, but at the same time not pay any more taxes than they have to. Okay, now... I've got a client who is a manufacturer, and he's got maybe 50 employees, okay? Now, when he has 50 employees, and if for sure you would get the COVID if you didn't take the shot, if for sure, then my client, the owner of the manufacturing company, could go to this person and say, I'm nervous that you are maybe, or you're going to give it to the others. And once I don't have people working, I cannot produce my product and I will go out of business, period. So if you had a person that had a disease or the chance to get a disease and you believe there was a chance that that person's disease could wipe out your whole business, then I could understand the logic and the, uh, the, the, the being careful to tell that person if they want to continue to work in the factory, they're going to have to get the booster and the shots. Okay, I understand that. But now the government has made this mandate, this mandate that says you've got till next Tuesday, you've got till, you know, a month from now. We're talking about our military. We're talking about police officers. We're talking about all these people who are vital to our country being safe and, and successful. If you don't take that shot by next Tuesday, you're fired. You're fired. 
And that number is not a small number. So as the Supreme Court is trying to decide what our founding fathers gave the government the authority to do and what they did not give them the authority to do, there's never been a time in all of our over 240 years as a nation. I do not know of a single time in our history when the government said, if you don't do, if you don't follow this protocol for health, you're going to lose your job. We as the government, we're going to decide. The way our founding fathers designed our government was that the national government was meant to be like an overseer, to uh, have a, a ready militia, what they used to call it, a ready military to protect us as a nation, to keep federal highways and parks and those kinds of things going. But our founding fathers, especially Thomas Jefferson, said we need for the decisions to be at a state level, not a national level. Now, I'm not going to talk D's or R's right now, but I think we would all agree that our leadership right now is pretty questionable. I, I, I can honestly tell you I have no confidence, not because they're a D, but just because of how they're acting, what they're saying, what it seems like they're really concerned about. Now, aside from that, our founding fathers did not want the national government to have the authority to make that kind of a mandate. I can tell you absolutely. And honestly, if our Supreme Court judges say, oh yeah, you have the authority, I'd like to know where in the Constitution that is because it's not in the Constitution. Now, they may try to take other decisions that have been made along the way and use those as the steps to get us to that spot. But do you realize this? If they make the decision, if the Supreme Court makes the decision that the national government, our federal authorities can make us do things or lose our jobs just because they say so, that's going to become the precedent for all future things. If you don't take this shot, you can't go to the grocery store and shop. It's already happening in New York City. If you don't have the certificates that show you taking the shots, you can't go to a restaurant. You can't go to a movie. You can't go to certain places and things. Now, understand, that's a city. I guess they can try to make that happen, but for the federal government to say it is not something that was given the authority to them by our founding fathers. So, I'm not uh, a judge. I'm not uh, a really, really highly intelligent guy that my brain is so big that every time I walk, my head tips. I'm not that, but I am someone who has taken some time to pray and to study our history, to do my best to study the law and to see the things, and to use common sense. The decision of whether a person is allowed to keep working at their job should be up to the, the employer who would fear for their company going under if everybody in their employment got sick. But for the government to go to the, the, the employer and say, we're firing all of your 50 people and you got nothing because they won't take the shot. It's not right, folks. It's not right. Now, why am I coming to you today? Well, because I'm a man of prayer and I believe that God is going to have his way. I really believe our country is in the process of facing a reaping what we've sown. And we've been sowing some heavy duty, uh, not following the way our country was designed to be run, to be operated as a republic. We've been doing a lot of that. Plus, I believe there's a whole pack of our leaders who don't really give a hoot what God says or a hoot what God's word says. Abraham Lincoln, let me see if I can pull up a little quote this way really fast here. He says, 
Now, this was back in the 1860s in one of his speeches. We have forgotten God. We have forgotten his gracious hand, which preserves us in peace and multiplies and enriches, enriches and strengthens us. We have forgotten God. And we had vainly imagined in the deceitfulness of our own hearts that all these blessings that we have were produced by some superior wisdom and virtue of our own. In other words, whatever we've got that's great, we did it. Pat myself on the back. Don't give God any uh, a thankfulness. Don't listen to God and God's word. And I believe we should be praying with all of our might, y'all, that God will not give up on us. God will not give up on us. It was uh, Thomas Jefferson who said, I tremble for my country when I reflect that God is just and his justice cannot sleep forever. Here I am, Saturday morning, sitting in my robe, having a cup of coffee, trying to get this little blister on my lip to heal up. No makeup. I came to you because this was heavy in my heart. Tell me what you think. You can get back with me at jerrystewartusa.com. You can also go over to my podcast and my website. You can find a lot of different places, but the thing that I'm interested in is all of us, all of we the people sticking together, red and yellow, black and white, I don't care. We the people sticking together under the leadership of Almighty God who's leading our, our, our leaders, if they will listen to his voice, to give us direction and to help our America continue to be the greatest nation in the world. I'm Jerry Stewart saying God bless you all. See you next time, which may be 15 minutes from now. Bye-bye.